I've been actually a user of Postman for a long time. I actually started using Postman shortly after it first came out. Anybody here using Postman right now? Anybody not familiar with what Postman is as a platform? I'll give you a little bit of background and intro. So we're an application platform that will allow you to design and test an API. Most people know of Postman as an API testing tool. There's already an API out there. I just want to go call that API. Let me go use a tool like Postman to go call that API and see what the response is going to look like. That's where most of our users are using the platform. Over the last several years, we've actually expanded the platform to be more into the development side of, I want to build an API for other people to consume, not just let me go test an API. What I'm going to be focusing on today is a little bit of both. We're going to learn a little bit about how to kind of start building out an API within Postman, but we're going to spend some time on how to build out testing and then how to automate that testing, maybe pull it into a CI, CD type of platform like CircleCI, Travis CI, Jenkins. Uh, we have a number of those integrations that we can work with. Um, so automation at a glance. Most people that, that use Postman right now, they're using it to basically build what we call a collection, which is just a collection of all the different types of requests that you could make to an API. And you basically need a way to organize all of those. And so we call that a collection. From there, for each of those requests, you can write a little bit of test code saying, OK, when I send over that request and I get the response back, what can I do with that response? Can I make sure that that response stays within a particular type of format? Um, or maybe you need to do some setup ahead of time, like maybe you need to go authenticate to something or crunch some data before calling that API call in the first place. Um, and so once you write that test code, then you can use what we call our collection runner, where you can go and manually run these tests. But we're going to learn today about how to automate running that so you're not sitting there clicking a button every time. So we have a couple of command line tools you can use. Uh, we've got a newer one that came out last fall when we released version 10 of the Postman product, and it's called the Postman CLI. The older one that we have is uh, kind of a community-developed version of a command line interface called Newman, and it is named after the Seinfeld character. Um, since, you know, Postman, you know, Newman is the postal carrier in, in the Seinfeld show. That's where Newman got his name. Um, and so we're going to take a, a quick look at how to run your collection tests in both Newman and the Postman CLI. And then we're going to look at uh, a few steps on how to automate that in a CI-CD platform. Uh, for those that are here at the conference today, um, I do have some really cool swag. I've got some Postman socks, if anyone's into like really colorful socks. I've got a few of these. got plenty of stickers to hand out. Um, so if you currently use Postman and you want to like show off what you do in Postman, I've got a few pairs of socks, so while, while supplies last. Um, and if you can really wow me and knock my socks off, uh, I do have a mini drone to give away. So uh, come, come, come find me later and uh, show me what you got in Postman. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate today, I'm going to go through kind of the Postman interface. I'm going to go through some command line stuff as well. I'm going to show you a dad joke generator API that I built about a year ago. So if you, uh, if you love dad jokes as much as I do, uh, then hopefully you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, by the way, what's the best time of day to go see a dentist? 2.30. <laughs> right, this is the kind of joke that I just want to prepare you. These are the kinds of jokes that we're going to be uh, seeing on the screen here. Um, but I'm going to show you how I pull an open API or a Swagger API spec into Postman, and then how we can kind of get started building a collection out of that, how we can start with some testing, do the command line tools, and uh, get into CI CD. All right, so let's get started here. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the actual Postman interface. Now, I'm using the desktop application, and we'll zoom in on this a little bit. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, either you know, currently or after the fact, if you're watching the video later on, uh, you'll be able to search the Postman uh, interface up at the very top. So whether you're in the desktop version or the browser version, we try to maintain the feature parity here. Um, and so you'll have the search bar here at the very top. And you can just search for automating API testing, look for the thing made by me, and uh, you'll find all these notes. And so this is going to even give you the GitHub repo of the awful dead jokes that I'm going to share with you today, um, but also kind of all the different links uh, that we have going on 
for how to use all these different tools, like the command line tools and how to uh, do CI, CD, and so on. So let's dive in. The first thing that I've done is I've, I've already imported my open API specification here. So this is just a, a kind of a simplistic API interface. Most, interfa or most APIs are gonna be way more complex than this. I've just got kind of a simple sort of heartbeat is my API up and running. It's just on a hello endpoint. And then a, you know, a, a typical API endpoint that we might see might look like API v1 and then a path of some kind. So I'm just doing a couple of get requests here. And this get request is go get a joke. So this is where we're going to get started. So if your organization is already building out an API, maybe you've already written some code. There are a lot of open source tools out there that will allow you to take existing code and kind of figure out what these endpoints are going to be. And it can generate an open API specification or a Swagger specification. Or depending on the kinds of tools that you use to do the development, it may come up with a specification for you. Either way, you can import that specification into Postman, and then you can get started with automating a lot of the testing and so on that, uh, that we're going to take a look at today. So we won't, we're not going to go through like step by step everything inside OpenAPI here. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to go build a collection out of this. So over here in the context bar on the left side, I'm currently in the APIs area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my collections. And I need to create a collection. So before you can really do any of this in Postman, you've got to be logged in, and you need to make what we call a workspace. And that workspace will allow you to build out an API, build these collections. You do need to be logged into Postman uh, in order to save this, because it does synchronize on the Postman servers in the cloud. Um, we have a free plan that's very generous as far as the quotas. But we're going to talk about what some of these quotas and rate limits are going to be as we get into the testing as we go. So the first thing I need to do is actually create a collection here. And so I'm going to call this collection dead jokes. And then from here, we can start adding requests to our collection. So the first one, I'm just going to call my heartbeat. And that's just my hello endpoint. And that's going to go to localhost. I currently have my API running locally on my laptop. And that was just a hello endpoint. Uh, now I'm a big fan of. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. So if you're on a Mac, command enter. If you're on a Windows PC or Linux PC, control enter. We'll automatically send that over so you don't have to like go over with your mouse and actually click on that send button, but you, you certainly can. And this is just giving me back a, a simple payload here that says hello world. So that way I know that everything's working OK. So I'm going to save that uh, request. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add one more. So I'm going to hover over my collection, click on three dots, and I'm going to add a new request. And this is going to call get a joke. And in here, this is going to be the same localhost path. But in this case, I had API v1 joke. And if I send that over, uh, I can't take my dog to the pond anymore because the ducks keep attacking them. That's what I get for buying a purebred dog. All right. Thank you. <laughs> took, took, took a minute. Took a minute. All right. Um, so I, I warned you ahead of time, these jokes were going to be awful. Um, so we know that this endpoint works. And so what we can do now, now that we know that these endpoints are working, now we can get into writing a little bit of test code. And so inside the interface, we have uh, pre-request scripts. Um, and so we've got these two areas here. The pre-request script is basically any code that you want to execute before you call this API code. And this could be things where you need to do some authentication ahead of time. Maybe you need like a JSON web token. Maybe you need some sort of OAuth setup. Maybe you just need to go find some random data. Or if you want to chain a whole bunch of API commands together, your pre-request script here can say, go call this other API or go do this other work. Now go get this awful dad joke and then go do something. Um, but we're mostly going to hang out in the test tab here. And this is where we're going to write some tests. So the nice thing about Postman is we have a whole bunch of pre-written snippets of code down here uh, where we can kind of get a, a head start on how to write some tests. Now, in Postman, we actually implement the Chai library. If anyone has done behavior-driven development or behavior-driven testing in Chai.js, uh, that's built into Postman. And so we can, we can get into a lot of expectations and assertions and so on as we build out these tests. And we do a lot of this in these snippets here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's expect to get back a 200 code. 
And so the PM is just our postman object, and we're saying I want to start a test. This first string is just what you want to name the test itself, and we're basically saying I expect that my response is going to have a status of 200. Now, at any point when I'm writing out this test code, if any line of this code fails, it stops execution. It won't run anything after it. Same as a typical sort of software test. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more testing underneath this that as long as we get a 200 status code, it's going to execute the rest of it. But if we don't get a 200 status code, it's going to stop executing here, and it won't run any additional code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack that response a little bit. So I'm just going to grab my response and unload that as JSON. And this is just going to deserialize the JSON into a JavaScript object. And then we can interact with this. If you're familiar with the JavaScript language, you can interact with this um, using the Chai library. So we can do things like I want to expect that my response uh, to have a property called data. So if we go back and we look at the response, we actually see it's an object, and we expect that that object has a key called data. And so that's going to be the first thing that I check for. Now, we can manually send this over. And what we should see on here, where did it go in my interface? So I need to zoom out just one more spot. Sorry, that got a little bit smaller on the screen. But we can see the test result is one of one. And if you can discern the color green, uh, it's, it's a green color right now saying that all of my tests have passed. Um, and so what I can do now is I can continue to add more tests in here. So the nice thing about Postman is you can chain as many of these expectations and assertions together at the same time that you'd like. So we don't really put a limitation on how much JavaScript code that you can run in here. And you can run just regular JavaScript in, inside of here as well. We have a number of other libraries that are available if you want to get into like cool randomizers and things like that. If anyone's familiar with Faker.js, we can do things like generate a random UUID or go generate a random first name, last name, things like that if you need to generate some data. For example, if you're testing out a post endpoint where you want to create a user, for example, and you don't want every user to have the exact same name, you can use the Faker.js library that we have built in to generate fake names as you're adding users in your testing. So I'm going to do one more here. So now that we know that my response has an element called data, I can say I expect that my response.data now to have a property called joke. And I can send that over. I still have test results one of one, so I know that this test result has also passed. So this is just a very simplistic sort of approach here, just to see, like, can we unpack this data a little bit? We have a, a member on the Postman team who actually went in and built out a very complex set of automated tests, which will scan through a whole open API specification or a Swagger specification and go try to find all of your endpoints and all the different data types and actually automate building out and running on the fly dozens or hundreds of these software tests just looking at your API specification. You'll be able to go through and scan that uh, the API is working as expected. I can share those links out a little bit later if anyone's interested in that. So now that we have this test, uh, we want to make sure that we save all of our work here. Now, how do we, like, where do we go from here? So from here, we want to get into, OK, well, how do I start the automation process of this? Because it could be a little bit tedious if I've got a lot of endpoints to go through and click on an endpoint and hit send, and click on a, uh, a request in my collection and hit send, and click on a collection and hit send. Um, it could get very slow. And so as much as possible, we want to move away from the manual testing and say, can I go run a whole bunch of these all at one time? And for that, we want to use our, what we call our collection runner. So now that we have a, a number of requests here, what we can do is we can go in and we can click on the collection itself. And then along the top here, we'll see a run button. And this is where we get into uh, what we call our collection runner, where we can manually run as many of these requests as we like. And so we can kind of pick and choose 
Um, didn't update on, there it is. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit more. So you can actually check the checkboxes here, select the checkboxes for which of these tests you want. You can also reorder them as well, which is uh, a newer feature that we've added recently where you can actually reorder these. But you can basically go in and pick and choose. Like these are the, thing, these are the, the actual uh, endpoints that we want to hit if you've got test code in there. We didn't write any test code for the heartbeat, but I'm going to leave that automated anyway. And then we can come in here and we can manually run this. Now, there are limitations on the plans that we have within Postman, just to be transparent about this. There are limitations on how many times you can manually like, click this button that says, you know, go run all my dad jokes. Um, we do limit that. You can find that information on our pricing page with the free plan and the basic plan. I think you're limited to 25 per month. Uh, we're always open to hearing feedback from users on those limits. Uh, but basically sitting here and like clicking that button to run these manually every time you're limited on that. So this is where we're going to move into the command line tools. So if we run this, uh, we see, okay, it actually went through. It ran those. There were no tests in the heartbeat, but the testing that we did on getting a joke, that actually passed okay. It tells you all kinds of statistics. How long did it take? How many tests were there? What was the average response time? It's all running locally on my laptop, so it comes back nice and quick. And this actually doesn't use any of the Postman API, which also has some limitations I'll talk about kind of as we go. So that's how we manually run. We can come in here and we can click that button to run it again and again. We can also get into automation here. And if we were to schedule this run, this is something that we call monitors. And if anyone's familiar with cron jobs, anyone know what cron jobs are? This is basically Postman's version of a cron job where you can say, I want to go run this at a scheduled time every day. I want to know that this is running all the time. Now, the frequency of how often you run this, again, the monitors have a limit uh, that you can execute these over a month. Um, but you can basically come in and you can, you can give it pretty fine granularity as far as how frequently you want it to run. So, for example, you can come down here, you can give it a name, and you can say, you know, on a per minute timer, I want to run every five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and so on. Um, if you go into the hour, you can say, I want to run every hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Um, or you can get into a daily, or, uh, sorry, the week timer then will give you options about do you w just want to run Monday to through Friday, what time of day do you want to run it, and that sort of thing. And there are links on here as well for the resource usage um, if you actually want to get in and see what your resource usage is. So let me shrink this over here so you can see that more of that interface. Um, you can also tell it how many times maximum you want to run. If you get into different environments, uh, I'll talk about this really briefly. Uh, you can pick which environment you want this to run. The environments would basically be if you want to build this out in a developer mode, a staging sort of platform, a production level platform, you can go in and you can set different environments where, for example, when I go call my joke API, am I hitting local host? Am I hitting a staging server? Am I hitting a production server? We want to try to uh, make that as sort of generic as possible where maybe we don't have the host name here. Maybe we turn that into a variable and we put that variable in our environment. So the actual base domain name that we hit is stored as a variable. So now in developer, in my development environment, I can set it to my local host. In a staging environment, I can set that host. And for example, we could just have a variable here called host or something like that. Uh, where now I can go build that variable. And then depending on which environment I actually want to run this in, it'll replace that part of the URL for us. So we allow for a lot of flexibility in, in that regard. So when you come into the runner, you can then pick that environment. Um, and then you can also specify, I want to get emails about this. Um, and if it fails over and over again, like stop bugging me, <laughs> which is pretty handy if, uh, if you're in development mode and you run this on a regular basis, you don't want to get bombarded with emails, and so you can, you can tell it to stop. Um, we also allow the upload of, of uh, JSON data as well. If, uh, if you're testing um, something where you, know, you want to test it with a whole bunch of users, you can come up with some pre-generated data that you want to feed into those tests, and then for each line of that data, we'll go run the test with, with all that. So we allow quite a bit of flexibility in the monitors in here. So that's all within the interface. Once this is scheduled to run, 
we take care of that on the Postman cloud. You don't need to really come in and, and manage that. It'll just run. You can come in and shut it off at any time. But let's talk about how to do this on the command line. Because as I mentioned, when we come in here and we manually click that run button, um, it does use up uh, an amount of quota and some rate limiting that we have on there. And so we have two command line tools that we can use. So the one that has been around the longest is called Newman. And what we can do with Newman is we can say, Newman run, go run this collection. Now, the caveat with that is to get around some of the limitations on actually calling the Postman API, you can actually export your collection as a local file, and then you can run Newman as much as you want. So when we came in and we were looking at that interface and said, I want to manually run those tests, you're limited to 25 per month. But if you export that collection, you can run Newman as often as you want on your local system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my collection. And on the collection itself, where I have dad jokes, I'm going to click on the three dots here. And I'm going to tell it that I want to export this. So I'm going to export my collection. And I'm going to save this as a file name. And I'm just going to call it dad jokes. I'm just going to leave that file name as is. It landed in my downloads directory. So now what I can do is at the command line, I can say Newman run downloads dad jokes postman collection. And what we're going to see here is, OK, it went and it ran all that. There were two requests. I ran one iteration of those tests. And only one of them had a test. None of them had pre-request scripts. And we had uh, some assertions that ran. Everything ran properly. It gives us a little bit of statistics here. Now, as far as the reporting, you can customize these reports a little bit. Uh, by default, we'll put some color in the, in the ASCII in the output here. Um, but when you're getting into a CI CD platform, uh, being able to put this into a shell script is, is fine. But our Newman tool and our Postman CLI tool will also set sort of the Unix exit uh, variable that will tell you whether it passed or not. And that's what a lot of CI CD platforms will use to determine whether something passed or failed. So if you're used to doing other software testing, like running PyTest or uh, running, say, Ruby or JavaScript testing, um, there's going to be some sort of exit code that that operation is going to tell you whether or not that succeeded. And the Newman tool and the Postman CLI tool will both do the same thing. And so you can actually halt your CI CD platform if these tests don't pass. One question that I get a lot, though, is if I'm building out my software and I'm doing proper software testing, why do I need Postman? If I'm building out an API and I'm actually coding up my dad joke API in Python and I've got test code for that, why do I also need Postman? And the answer to that is just another level of confidence that my API is working. When I'm doing software development, I'm typically doing something like unit testing where I want to make sure that can I go grab that joke properly out of my little database? Is that working OK? But I'm not really typically testing things from the user's perspective, which is what we call behavior testing. What's the user's behavior? What's sort of their workflow? How do we build out integrations of, can I go add a user to my database? Can I go fetch that user from my database? Can I verify that all that's working OK? And then you know, can I go delete and, and clean up that data afterward? That's more integration level testing, which we can also call behavior testing, where we want to do things from the user's perspective. And that's really where Postman is coming in here. So in a CI CD platform, when you're executing your code, you might have it in a Docker container. You might have you know, some other way of actually executing this, uh, this code on your CI CD platform. We'll look at, at some of this here in a moment. Um, but the Postman tests are basically just giving you that extra level of confidence that your API is working. Aside from just the unit level testing, you know that what the user's behavior is going to do is matching your expectation. And that's where we're getting into these Postman tests. So let's go back to Postman here for a moment. Um, so when we, when we get into the testing here, like I mentioned, we've got a lot of different snippets in here where we can uh, access our variables. We can maybe save this data as variables or extract part of the joke. And we can, uh, we can export it down here to our console. There's lots of different sorts of tooling in here that, that you can do with these snippets. You can also say, I want the response body to have like a specific value. So we've got lots and lots of these little snippets that you can already uh, sort of use as a framework to get started with your testing. 
And as I mentioned, we've got a lot of uh, advanced testing stuff like Faker.js that I'll, I'll uh, send out links for in a little bit. All right, so that was Newman. Um, the other uh, command line tool that we released last fall with version 10 was called the Postman CLI. And the difference between the two is that the Postman CLI is written by the Postman team. The Newman tool was kind of started from a community effort of, can we get a command line tool to go run Postman collections? And the Postman CLI was basically born out of that where we wanted a tool that we developed that we can add our own features to. And so the Postman CLI actually has features that the Newman command line tool will not have. Uh, for example, with, uh, with more advanced plans on the, on the Postman platform, you can get into things like uh, API linting for security and for governance. Governance is basically how we define the communication of, this is what we want our API to be, this is how we want our API to behave, and we've got a lot of different APIs at our company, how do we make sure that all of our APIs behave the same way, react the same way, give the same kind of uh, you know, response layouts, that sort of thing. And the Postman CLI tool will uh, basically run those where the Newman tool will not. And so what I can do here is instead of Newman run, I can say Postman run, and I can give it that same path of downloads, dad jokes, oops. Sorry, we need to say collection run. Uh, because we have the, the different uh, tooling for the APIs for the, uh, for the screening and so on. Um, and so same, same kind of output that we saw with the Newman. So a lot of the formatting will be exactly the same uh, if, you, if you're trying to parse the results and so on. Um, we've, we've tried to keep some feature parity there between the two. Um, some of the other differences with the Postman CLI is we've tried to make it a lot friendlier as far as logging in and logging out. And so we actually have this Postman login, and this will actually jump you over to a browser and have you log into the Postman uh, application. And this will use the Postman API. Um, now, the nice thing about using the command line features here, especially when you're getting into um, something like a, like a CICD platform, is you may not always have the flexibility of how do I make sure these collections are already sort of pre-exported in a way that I can just run Newman or run the Postman CLI. There are ways that we can synchronize that. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, but you can also use the Postman API to go fetch these things as well. Now, what you saw me do earlier was just export the collection out of Postman. If you're building out those environments like we talked about, like your development environment and your staging environment, you can also export those environments as local files as well. Um, but we can also do all of this on the command line. I'm just gonna show you an example of how to do this with Newman. Um, I won't actually run this one. But for example, you could store some, let me make this a little bigger on the screen for you. You can actually store some of this data as uh, environment variables. So for example, maybe I have my Postman API key in here. And so what this first URL is doing is I'm saying, hey Newman, go run this. And what this is doing is it's, it's actually using an environment variable for my collection ID, and I'm fetching it using my Postman API key. And so I can go get a Postman API key and tell Newman like, hey, I don't wanna export this stuff. So that way if my team is going in and they're making changes all the time, I just wanna run Newman and I want Newman to go fetch whatever the last change was. And so we can actually use the Postman's uh, API, Postman API, to go fetch that data dynamically. So you don't have to constantly export this stuff and worry about synchronizing those files everywhere. So this is a really nice feature. This does get into using the Postman API though and there are also limitations on that. So there are a lot of benefits and disadvantages to all these approaches. Do you want to export these things and get around some of these limits, or do you want to use the API to kind of automate that and make that a little more flexible for your team, or just for yourself if you're a solo developer? So there are pros and cons, and you need to weigh those as a developer. Um, but you can also set things like global variables and so on. Um, in this particular case, this was a weather API where I was trying to fetch, you know, what's the weather back in Denver. I was lucky enough to hit this ice storm on the way out of Denver, and now I'm hitting it here in Detroit, and I'll hit it again when I fly back home. Uh, so lucky me. Um, but you can pass variables into Newman. You can also pass these variables the same way to the Postman CLI. 
Newman has been around the longest, and so you'll find a lot of tutorials out there on how to use the Newman command line tool. The Postman CLI tool is very similar as far as feature parity, and so you'll find they're, they're gonna be very interchangeable as far as the command line parameters and so on for passing these variables, fetching things dynamically, how to use your Postman API key and so on. So let's go take a look at uh, another feature of the Postman CLI. So when we click on the collection itself, if we come over to the right context bar, there's a little information icon that we can hit. And this is where we actually have a collection ID value. And I just clicked on a little button on the side here that copies that over to my clipboard. And what I can do is at the command line, I can say postman collection run, and I can actually paste in that ID. Now when you do the postman login, it goes through an OAuth scenario, and it actually returns back a postman API key for you so that when you say, I wanna go run this collection by the collection ID, it actually goes and fetches that dynamically for you. So very similar to what we saw, oops, error fetching provided the ID, okay, let me go double check that. That is the collection ID, why didn't that work? Oh, live demos. Um, all right, so there is, uh, there is a way that we can uh, tell the Postman API to go fetch this dynamically. Um, it was working, not sure why it didn't work just now. Um, but this will, again, allow you some flexibility around just fetching that stuff where you don't need to store as many uh, variables ahead of time. Similar to what we saw with the Newman, when I looked at this other, this other one here, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four different environment variables in one command. And that can be a lot depending on your team and how complex you want to set these things up, but there's a lot of URLs in there and that command line thing just got really huge. Where with the Postman one, it's gonna be a lot simpler because when you do the Postman login, it already has that Postman API key for you. And so it'll do a lot of that work for you. So let's take it one step further. So we talked about how do we build a collection? How do we add some tests? How do we manually run this? Where do we go from here? Well, we can go grab our own Postman API key, and this is typically gonna be used within a CI CD platform, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of Circle CI. Um, so we're gonna to need to generate an API token for here. We're also gonna need a, a Postman API key, so I'm gonna go ahead and generate these as well. Not too worried about it for the life of the demo, because as soon as this is over, I'm gonna invalidate these keys, so I'm okay with showing them on the screen for, for just now. Uh, but what we can do inside of Postman, if I come back to the APIs area and I click on dad jokes, um, so a couple of things that we can do here. The first one is connecting a repository where we can start to synchronize any changes that we make with GitHub. So if your team is working on GitHub and they wanna change that open API spec or that Swagger spec, you can synchronize those changes into Postman. Likewise, if you find that you need to make a change in Postman, you can synchronize that back up to GitHub. And one of the things that we'll also synchronize is actually exporting those collections for you. And so if you don't wanna go in and manually export those collections all the time, if you want your CI CD platform to fetch that out of a GitHub repo, this would be part of connecting that repository in here. This will go through uh, a whole OAuth thing of OAuth into GitHub, make sure it has access to your files, and this will allow Postman to sort of talk to GitHub on your behalf using your OAuth token in order to push work up to your repository. What we're gonna get into here though is actually testing this out. And so you'll, you'll see over here we've got a number of uh, integrations for deployments, for API performance, if you wanna get into tools like New Relic or Datadog, um, or what we're gonna focus on right now is the testing and the automation. So to get here, again, I went to the APIs icon in the left context bar, I clicked on the API itself, and now we're gonna go over here to test and automation. From here, uh, we can either run it on our local uh, setup, or we can choose one of several integrations. So we have things like Bitbucket, uh, GitHub Actions, Azure Pipeline, Circle CI, Travis CI, and so on. Um, and so we're gonna do the Circle CI one here. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually figure out which collection we're going to associate with this because what we've done in the interfaces, we've kind of split the API producer from the API consumer. 
in the past, in uh, version 9 and previous, if you built out an API inside of Postman, we automatically made a, uh, a collection for you based on those endpoints. Um, that got a little bit tricky to synchronize, and not all producers are going to go in and test what they're building, so we decided not to automatically build those collections anymore. And so when we get into the automation here, we have to tell it which collection we're associating this with. So you can either generate a new one from your definition, or we can copy over a collection, or you can just add a whole new one from scratch. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to grab the collection that I made earlier where we actually had the testing, and we're just going to copy that over here. So we've copied that collection in. We come back to dad jokes. We're going to go back to testing and automation. Now we see that that's been added as a collection. We haven't actually run that yet, um, but you can also pull up some statistics in here about um, when you actually run these things in a CI/CD uh, pipeline. You'll actually see some statistics on like when it ran and so on. Under the automation, this is why we're all here. This is kind of the point of the talk, is how do we automate these things? So we're going to come down and we're going to choose Circle CI for now. And it's asking for a name, so I'm just going to call this Dead Jokes. And this is where we need an API key. So this is going to be your Circle CI token. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Circle CI. And inside Circle CI, if you go into your user settings, you'll have an area to build out a personal API token. And this is where we're going to go create this token. I'm just going to call this dad jokes. And like most platforms, it's like, this is your API token. This is the only chance you're going to get to see it. So copy and paste this somewhere else. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to leave this tab open in case I do need that again. And I'm just going to paste that in here. We do mask it. You can unmask it if you need to. Um, and now as soon as I did that, this drop down automated, if you happen to catch that, um, and it actually automated right away saying, oh, this is the Circle CI project that you want to associate this with, or, or here are a list of your Circle CI projects, which one of these do you want to associate with this? So I'm going to pick my dad jokes, and I'm going to go ahead and connect this. So it added that integration. We give you a little pop-up down here. And now it's going to say, hey, do you want to configure your Postman CLI? I've already got through some of that, so we'll do that later. We come back over here and we back up a page. Now we can see our Circle CI environment is all up and up and going. We can go run that build, we can run on a local environment, or we can go into the configuration. So let's go take a look at the configuration that we need here. So again, this is where we can pick which environment we want to use. So on a Circle CI, for example, that's probably closer to a staging environment, so you may not want to use a development environment, but depending on how you're actually testing out your work inside your CI platform, you may have this running in a Docker container, for example, and that may still be running on a local host type of uh, username. So again, you can build all of these things as Postman environments and tell CircleCI which of these environments you want to use. In this case, we don't have any environments. It's all kind of set in our uh, thing right now, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now, the governance and security, this is an enterprise option. so. Um, I imagine most of you will turn this off since it won't be applicable unless you're on an enterprise plan. Um, but this would be where you're actually going through and doing API security scanning. Now, we do offer uh, free API scanning for the OWASP top 10 for APIs. This is something that we wanted to make sure was available to all customers of Postman and not just people that had money to spend on an enterprise plan. And so we will help you scan your API for common vulnerabilities. So you can leave this on if you want, but it won't do any governance checking. The governance, again, is checking around, you know, do our URI paths match what we want to conform to as a company, for example. So I'm going to leave that off for now. Um, we're going to have it run on a Linux environment within Circle CI, And then here's your configuration file. It gives you everything that you need for Circle CI, And this is part of working with these partners to integrate these things, is we can literally copy and paste this and we've got this ready to go. It's going to download the Postman CLI uh, tool, and it's going to log in with the API key. Now, it's expecting the API key here as an environment variable. And so I'll show you how to do that really quick. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to force a login using an API key, and then it's going to go do the Postman collection run um, with uh, a particular Circle CI. And the integration ID here is basically so that you can get the results back inside of Postman. 
So it will allow you within Postman to say, go run Circle CI. So you don't actually have to go deploy code. You can just say, go spin up a test on Circle CI or Travis CI or whichever CI CD platform you're using uh, with our integration partners. You can just go into Postman. You've got one spot where you can say, go run that thing. Tell me if it worked. So we wanted to make that as easy as possible. Um, but it's going to expect that you've got this API key as an environment variable on Circle CI. So let's go build that real quick, uh, which means I need a Postman API key. So on this other tab, I'm going to go generate a new API key, and we're just going to call this dead jokes. And again, it's saying this is the only time we're showing this to you, so make sure that you save a copy. I'm going to leave that tab open for a moment as well. And then back over on Circle CI now, I need to actually go um, build an environment variable for my project. So I'm going to close out my API tokens here. I'm in my dad joke uh, project. And what I want to do is I want to go into my project settings. And inside project settings, we've got a lot of different settings here. One of them is environment variables. Uh, and this is where we can build that thing called Postman API key. I currently had a value. I'm going to remove that one because I want to replace it with the API key that we just had. So I'm going to call this Postman API key, and I need to paste in a value, which looks like that one. So I'm going to go ahead and now add that as an environment variable. So back in Postman, what it was giving us for Circle CI was looking for this command or for this environment variable called Postman API key, which it designates with a dollar sign. And so this is basically from a, from a Linux command line point of view, it's saying go find this environment variable called Postman API key, pass that as a parameter here to the Postman login. Now using that API key, it's going to be able to go find our collection. And then the integration ID, this is basically a Circle CI workflow job ID, which also gets built dynamically. But this is going to tell it when I go run this from Postman, go grab the results and put those results back into Postman. So this is all we need. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab all of this as my configuration. And I should be able to come over here to Circle CI. Actually, I don't need to do anything on Circle CI. I should just be able to do everything from inside of Postman. So we've got everything we need. I, uh, if you need to generate a new Postman API key, you can do that from here. You don't have to go into the other interface. I just did that for the sake of convenience. So now that we've got all of that built out, we can back up a page. Let's go back over here. Go to our, oops, where'd it go? There we go, test and automation. And now we can come in here and we should be able to run this build. It's asking which branch. Um, oh, sorry, it's the local one here that we want. No, that's not the one that we want either. Um, sorry. Bad demo. We'll lighten the mood with some dad jokes here in a minute. All right, let's try this again. So we go back in here. All right, for some reason it's not picking up my branch. I'll have to talk to the team about that. Um, no builds found. No. All right. Bad demo. I'll, uh, I'll fix this offline. Um, but what this would allow us to do is actually go in and run this on Circle CI, and it would basically pull the results back in to Postman. Um, and there's also a synchronization button here as well that if your team goes into Circle CI and triggers a build, that you can pull those results into Postman as well. Now you've got one interface where you're building out your API, you're testing your API, and you can pull these results back in to the Postman interface itself. So you've got one platform that you can use for all of this work. Um, but this would basically be where you would automate it from here. So as your team is building out your API, um, as you push code to Circle CI, Circle CI will uh, automatically trigger that build, and then you can come in here and you can synchronize those builds back into Postman, or you can come into Postman and run that build manually. So. We'll, uh, we'll end this part of the demo with actually uh, pull out a joke here. You heard about the restaurant on the moon, great food, no atmosphere.
I wanted to go find some uh, Indian food last night when I got into Detroit and they ran out of flatbread. They didn't want me posting on social media about it, so they made me sign a non-disclosure agreement. Come on. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my jokes are bad. Um, anyway, as far as uh, other automated testing goes, uh, we mentioned Postman uh, interface has the Chai.js built in already. Um, all, this, all the slides have all these links that you can go directly to our learning center and, uh, and grab some of these links about how to use Chai, and it'll also link over to the appropriate tools and so on. Uh, we also have Faker.js as well. So again, if you're doing the pre-request scripts where you want to go generate some things ahead of time, we do things like, go get me a random IP address, go get me a random street address, go get me a random first name, last name. It's not as cool as like Factory Bot, which has like, go generate a Simpsons name, or go grab a weapon from a D&D &D game, or World of Warcraft. Like, people have been <laughs> spending a lot of time building out those kinds of automated uh, random strings, which are great. We just use Faker.js, which has a lot of uh, really neat stuff built in. Um, we've also got some links in here uh, to kind of compare and contrast. Like, do you want to use Newman? Do you want to use Postman CLI? Again, there are benefits and disadvantages to both. Uh, we are trying to get more people into using the Postman CLI. We feel it's going to give a lot more flexibility. Plus, it's a tool that we as Postman can control, where the Newman command line tool still works perfectly fine. We're not deprecating either one. Um, and, we're, and we're not going to try to uh, persuade people to not use Newman. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more tutorials out there on how to use Newman. Uh, we're still just getting started with Postman CLI, but um, it's going to be pretty robust from a feature set point of view. Um, and then from the CI/CD setup, uh, so lots of links there as well. But the main ones that I want to chat about, if you want to get into advanced testing, go check out Chai and Faker.js. It'll give you a lot more flexibility there. So that's my talk. If you've got questions, uh, I'm happy to take questions. All the code and all my links. Um, so at the bottom of the slides, you had the GitHub link. If you just change out the username to Ian Douglas, Hacking with the Homies Developer Conference 2023, you'll see uh, the code um, and all the links that I had. And there's also a link to the Dad Joke API if you want to uh, run your own or read some of the other awful dad jokes. Uh, again, come find me today if you want some socks. I've also brought a lot of stickers with me if you're into laptop stickers. Got some stickers. And then, uh, you know, knock my socks off. I got a drone to give away as well. I'm happy to take questions if you have questions. Thank you.